Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. Today I'm going to be looking at mirrors and not particularly into them because all the mirrors I own seem to make me look old, fat and ugly, making me think that I got them from a fairground. But we'll have a look at mirrors in particular in conjunction with the previous how to turn your head without wobbling the bike film because you need to know where your blind spots are and if you know where they are you can avoid overly turning your head and when you start getting older and your neck starts getting stiffer you'll really appreciate this. Anyway on with the show and we'll start by having a look at what sort of angle of view you get from the inside of a motorbike helmet with and without swiveling your eyes. So I've stuck my crash helmet on, walked towards my open garage door until both halves have just about disappeared from my edge of view without turning my eyes. Then I put a tripod where, roughly where my head was, got my Oxford protractor out from when I was at school and measure the angle. And as you can see I get about 130 degrees angle of dangle here from left to right without moving my eyes. Of course we we all pivot our eyes left to right we don't just look straight ahead unless we're car drivers and uh, doing this means you get a bit more angle of view and checking it again moving my eyes left to right as I approach the garage about 160 degrees. Now if you look up online the human field of vision it'll quote something like 220 degrees which is quite a lot I think that's um, moving your head a little bit as well as just pivoting your eyes because mine's certainly nowhere near that but also bear in mind your crash helmet is going to limit the vision even if it's only slightly. My shoe berth I can if I pivot my eyes just see the edge of the helmet but bear in mind if you wear glasses with very thick legs or, or arms on them whatever you call them sidebars you're effectively wearing blinkers. I've seen people wearing these on bikes and I think why are you doing it you're cutting down so much of your peripheral vision not a good idea in my book. Anyway let's get into the classroom which isn't where we want to be but don't worry we'll soon be back out on the road or at least the industrial estate. In the diagram here we have a representation of a motorbike with you wearing your nice bright green helmet and your big angled wing mirrors. The 130 degree angle you have without turning your eyes is approximately there. Turning your eyes from side to side gives you another 30 degrees, 15 degrees or so each side, so you'll have this sort of angle. If we're using our mirrors when we're looking behind, we get about 30 degrees. And most people, like myself, have a slight overlap between the two mirrors. So one mirror will be approximately there. And the other one with some overlap, around about there. But what this does mean is that we have quite a large pair of angles, one to our left, one to our right, where we can't see without moving our heads and this is the area where we do the head checking. So if we have 160 degrees we can see easily in front of us and we have two lots of 30 degrees but with a slight crossover so we'll call it 50 degrees that we have that we can see behind us. Then the remaining angle is going to be the sum of these which is 210 and of course we have 360 degrees in a circle minus the 210 leaves us with 150 degrees. 150 degrees will be split equally so these two angles are going to be about 75 degrees each. Of course this is only an approximation you may have wider angle mirrors you may have narrower angle mirrors you may have mirrors where all you can see is shoulders in them, in which case I really would recommend mirror extenders. But knowing that we do have these areas here where we can't see without turning our heads means that we can do a mirror check. Something that I do, it's a walk round and uh, any time I get a new bike I'll do this. Um, you go out on a test ride you'll set the mirrors approximately but when you've gone and got a bike you do need to have a look at the mirror setup so you know how far you've got to turn your head and where your blind spots are. This is done by having somebody walk around your bike with two pairs of gloves. Because they're probably going to be on a bike while you're doing this, they'll supply one pair of gloves, you'll supply the other pair of gloves. So let's have a look at how you do that. So with the aid of Carl, here we do a mirror check. Carl starts walking round, I face forwards but pivot my eyes until he disappears from my view. 
I'll let them know where I am. As I said, you do this with gloves. The high visors are there, so it's easier to see where we're going. I'm now looking in the rear view mirror. He's coming round behind me, and that's where I can pick him up again in my mirror. He walks around the back. I check the other mirror. I have him in both mirrors, and once he disappears from you, let him know. And he walks around to the front, and when I can see him again, he puts down another marker. Looking at it from the bike, here we go. I've just simulated pivoting my eyes here. Down goes the first marker. Looking in my mirrors, not an easy thing to do when you're trying to hold a video camera. As soon as I see Carl again, I'll let him know and he'll drop another high vis. And there he is. Looking into the other mirror, I'll wait for him to disappear from view. So you can see I'll get the top box in both mirrors. There comes goes Carl. There he disappears. I've put my hand up again. And finally, looking forwards with my eyes pivoted until I can see him again. And there we go. Just half a step backwards, please, Carl. Thank you. And put down a marker. So you can see here where the fluorescent orange bibs are. Between the bibs are my blind spots on the tracer. So what I'll do, I'll just have a look over each shoulder in turn check where my blind spots are and that's how I know how far I need to turn my head as a minimum to do a blind spot check. There you go, nice and simple. Anyway, hopefully see you out on the road at some point, even if it's in my mirrors or me in your mirrors, which is far more likely because I'm not the fastest rider in the world. Take care, see you later, bye. Thank you for watching to the bitter end. To approximate my mirror field of view, I parked my bike so that I could just see the edges of the garage door in the right hand mirror. Then I put two magnets and a bit of string on the garage door, pulled the string tight around the edges of the mirror and then with a protractor measured the angle that I could actually see once the string was pulled tight. Not too tight though because that did pull the magnets off the garage door. So you can see here it's approximately 30 degrees. Now this doesn't seem right to me because the string extending in front of the mirrors was of less distance than it would be if I'd extended it back to my eyes. So it's only an approximation, it's not an actual measurement. Anyway, take care, bye.